People ask me um, how I like retirement, and uh, if you asked my wife, she would say that I flunked retirement. Uh, it was um, three papers a day and into a book here, and how much golf can you do? And as a result, I did a lot of things in my retirement. I started uh, an insurance company, started a packaging company, continued as a consultant to Bank of America, um, became the chairman of Seton Hall's capital campaign and chairman of in Trinitas Hospital's capital campaign. So um, when it came time to um, decide what I was going to do back in the spring, um, I decided to uh, relaunch Meeker Sharkey. Well, uh, the main reason was to, um, <clears throat> is because Bank of America was the ultimate beneficiary of Meek the Meeker Sharkey company, but they really didn't want to be in the insurance brokerage business. Their largest uh, or second largest bank in the, in the world, and uh, insurance really wasn't the reason why they bought <clears throat> the uh, bank up in Boston, Fleet Bank. The, the insurance operation came with it. And so they, they wanted to, to sell us, and uh, I had a right to uh, compete if they did. And uh, I had two sons in the, that were working for them and some other people that were also with them. And uh, we made a decision to um, do it differently because uh, maybe for a small or regional-sized bank, it made sense to have an insurance brokerage operation, but I guess for big national, that hasn't been successful throughout the country. There's only one or two banks that have successfully done it. And uh, so it, was, it seemed like a logical thing to do. You know, I, I, um, I think the biggest challenge anybody has in business to, is to try to understand the difference between a, a trend and a fad, and uh, to really have their fingers on, on the, the community and on the cultures and how things are evolving and the impact of immigrant and uh, so on. And we here in New Jersey have been very much influenced by the Asian, Southeast Asian, by the, the uh, South American, and. Uh, they certainly have influenced it, and I think they've affected our economy in a very, very direct way. And I think you have to understand and uh, realize and appreciate uh, the contributions and the needs that they're going to have and respond to them. But I, the big thing is, what, what's the difference between a, a trend and a fad? Because the fad will last for maybe one season, but what, what, is the, what are the true trends? Like, for example, got women going to work, women wanting to eat out more because they work all day. There's just, so as a result, that's what's influenced the fast food industry and so many other things. Uh, that, that's the difference between a trend and a fad. And if you, can, if you can divine that, then you're going to do pretty well. Well, I probably uh, not an awful lot because, uh, you know, you, you either are competitive or, or you're retiring. And uh, most people, uh, there's many people who are very, very competitive and not very athletic. And there's some people that are great athletes that are not very competitive, particularly in a social situation. And what I found is um, when I, I coached, I coached for about eight or nine years, and I learned a lot coaching high school baseball. And the reason why I learned that was because I was able to see <clears throat> uh, the kid who was the sixth or seventh man on the basketball team or the guy that was uh, who was uh, the utility infielder, outfielder. You know, when you're a great athlete, and I'm not saying I was a great athlete, I was able to stretch my arm pretty well, so I was a pitcher, and most people are, who are pitchers are not considered real great athletes by any means, like a shortstop would be or something like that. But uh, what I learned uh, from, from observing kids playing, that some very, very, very great competitive people learn uh, very good social aggressive skills and so on. Whereas the star, he's always accustomed to people coming to him. It's like the girl that's always so beautiful. She doesn't have to really do much to uh, attract anybody. She just is very, very attractive. And other women that might not be as beautiful uh, learn to use other uh, inducements and so on. So 
uh, I think th that's what I learned in sports, that uh, competition is, uh, is not unique to sports or athletics. Well, because I think, we, I think everybody recognizes that uh, there, there should be leadership and there should be people willing to volunteer and to get things done. Uh, I'm very, very fortunate in the sense and have been fortunate in my business career as well as in my uh, the uh, career of raising money and asking people for money. Uh, I don't mind people saying no. I don't take it personally. I don't feel any reaction to rejection because I know why I'm doing it. I know if I'm asking for something, I know that it's good and it's quality. And so when I get turned down, sometimes I feel sorry for the people who say no. I don't feel sorry for myself because uh, that, that's been a, a, a trait or a characteristic that I had that uh, I didn't have call reluctance. And uh, so I, I saw a lot of things that needed to be done and uh, had the temperament and the disposition to, to um, uh, you know, fill those roles.